Good morning, or good day, anyway. It's morning when I'm doing this. It's Wednesday, May 12th. Week is going, isn't it? We're in the middle of May. I'm feeling a little baseball fever. <laughs> Hoping the twins can get going a little bit more, but you know, it's, it's going to be an up and down year the way it sounds. But anyhow, it is the springtime. And I know there's a gas shortage out east because of the pipeline. Um, uh, uh, it got, uh, it sounds like the Russians have been able to fix into that and, and make it so that the east coast can't get gas. And evidently in Florida, they're getting a lot of 911 calls trying to find out where they can get gas. So, um, We'll just consider ourselves lucky and hopefully we won't get that kind of um, attack on our fuel systems here in South Dakota and all, all the rest of the places too. Next week I'm not planning to be around and so I won't be doing these devotionals. I'm going to be going to Minnesota to see my family finally getting there and, and hopefully doing more family things that, are, that we're, we're used to doing. So what I want to do is, is go into the Bible study a little bit more. Yesterday we had good conversation, and, and um, I want to share with you a story. I got sent this by Bob and Sharon Jones, but, but we also heard about it at our Bible study. I thought it was an interesting, funny way to get us laughing and going. But anyhow, you maybe have heard it, and I'm sorry for taking your time. Sister Marianne, who worked for a home health agency, was making her rounds visiting homebound patients, and she ran out of gas. As luck would have it, a Texaco gasoline station was just a block away. She walked to the station to borrow a gas can and buy some gas. The attendant told her that the only gas he, um, can he owned had been loaned out but she could wait until it was returned. Well, Sister Mary Ann was on her way to see a patient, so she decided not to wait. She walked back to her car. She looked for something in her car that could fill with gas. She could fill with gas. And she spotted the bedpan she was taking to the patient. Always resourceful, Sister Mary Ann carried the bedpan to the station filled it with gasoline, and carried the full bedpan back to her car. As she was pouring the gas into her tank, two Lutherans watched from across the street. One of them turned to the other and said, If it starts, I'm turning Catholic. <laughs> well, yesterday, we, our study begins with no longer strangers, and when I was growing up, the separation between Catholic and Lutheran was so far apart that it was like we were strangers to each other. Thank God that has changed a lot, and, and something like that can make someone change religion. <laughs> um, talking about water, not water into wine, but water into gasoline, huh? <laughs> Wire into something that can make a car start. Well, no longer strangers. And our, our text is Ephesians 2, verse 19, which reads as follows. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God. So we're together in this. And, and our author for this study is Violet Sinanello Little. And she writes this for us. Even though we are members of the same household, sometimes even those living in the same household can feel alone. According to a study released in January of 2020, of course that would be before COVID, Cigna Healthcare said 61% of Americans surveyed reported feeling lonely, but may come as a surprise to many. However, is that the younger people are even likelier to report loneliness than those who are older. Nearly 80% of Gen Z and 7 in 10 millennials are lonely, compared with 50% of boomers. In March of 2020, when COVID-19 
led to stay, led it to a stay home orders across the country. Feelings of alienation and loneliness began to rise. Three young students were determined to do what they could to break through the isolation. Aditi Merchant, a freshman at the University of Texas at Austin. Another UT first year student, Alan Zhu, and Zhu's younger brother, Anthony, came up with a unique system of matching folks. Big and Mini, it was called. It was a program that boasted of 1,500 active users across eight colleges, 14 organizations, and 25 countries. As a church who believes we are all members of the household of God, we are given opportunities to break through the loneliness experienced by so many, both young and not so young people. But we need to be open to new and creative ways of doing things. In the biblical books of First and Second Kings, we hear the story of two well-known prophets, Elijah and Elisha. Elijah was filled with women, wisdom and courage and had much to impart to the young prophet Elisha, who was chosen by God to take Elisha's place when he was gone. Elijah had much to pass along, even as the elders in our congregations have much to share. Yet sometimes the best thing the elders or bigs can do is to present and listen to, is to be present and listen to younger ones or minis in our congregations and communities. Intergenerational relationships involve striving for a mutuality of respect, which includes listening to one another's stories. Across all generations, there is wisdom to be received from fresh eyes, as well as wisdom to be shared by new experiences. Best-selling author Sue Monk Kidd writes in her novel, The Secret Life of Bees, that one of the characters, August, has a story living inside her with so much loudness you can pick it up on a stethoscope. We all have these stories living somewhere deep inside us. Good intergenerational relationships are ones where the stethoscope gets passed back and forth. Are you up for a good listen? Some questions to think about or to share with somebody else. Sometimes we can be a big to one person while simultaneously serving as a mini to another. Can you think of such relationships in your lives? And I think of the sandwich folks, the ones that are dealing with their parents, and but the, also the ones that are dealing with their children, and all that stuff that kind of goes on to truly listen to both sides. You can be mini to the elders, and you can be... Um, um, big to the younger ones. You know, we think of those kind of things in school kids and stuff. What story is burning inside, in, inside of you, waiting to be told, huh? Or when was the last time you held the stethoscope and listened deeply to the story of a mer another person not in your age group? And as I've shared, I think, before with you, is the fact that one of the things that really keeps me alive and active as a pastor to be kind of in that sandwich point and putting on the stethoscope, stopping my way of going to stop and listen to somebody else's way of going, whether it be younger or older. And you know, it's we can maybe give some kind of ideas, but that person needs to really know what it is that's inside or to share, to help, maybe to help them to come outside of their shell to realize the things that, that they need to be able to share. And then we can say sometimes, hey, I was there. And this, I know it may not help you, but this is what helped me. We pray for God's help in that. Let us pray. Oh God, you have always been our help in ages past, even as you are our hope for the coming years. Open our hearts to those you have placed in our midst that we might walk together on the path that you indeed put before us. And Lord, as we realize we're all in this together, 
We pray that you will help us to be the people you envision us to be. Help us to realize how we are woven together in wholeness and love for all you are and all you give, for walking with us in all places. Oh Lord, we give you thanks. We pray again for those that are making living off the land with, their, with the animals and with the, putting the seed in the ground. You are the God of the seed time and the harvest. Sunshine and rain, give to all who work the land the strength needed to care for your good creation. Grant us safety, favorable conditions, hope-filled hearts, as each seed is planted, each bud emerges from the branches and new life is birthed. Lord, we pray for favorable weather to help that to happen. Lord, we pray that all who are in need of your healing hand, that you be with them, may your healing come and be with the medical teams working with all of us to help us to be the, in the best health we can be. We lift up all our needs, spoken and unspoken, to you, knowing that you are the Good Shepherd, that with you we have everything we need. You will lead us from darkness to light. Your promises stand forever and do not fail. Lord, all these things we pray through Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So may this God, who makes us all no longer strangers, be with you today, giving you grace, hope, courage, and love. Bye for today.